the first time we started on the air, we were really a gothic, and the show was kind of a velvet drapey and sagging under its gothic uh, weight. And one day I got a script, and I read it, and there was a character in it walking down the stairs that I knew was dead, and there was nobody in the room. So I said, this must be a ghost. And I called Dan and I said, Dan, are we going supernatural? And he said, yes. That's how I found out that it was supernatural. And that was a big step to take because I think at that time, although I had never done a soap before, I think at that time soaps were very earnest, very real, and it took a lot of courage for Dan to do this, I think. The show, in my memory, didn't really take off with the audience until we got uh, the vampire story going. It was much better. The ratings rose immediately when we became supernatural. But the fanaticism and the, the love and the hunger of the audience for this show didn't be, really begin, I think, until we got the vampire story going. And once that started to go, I mean, Dan and the writers went with it because that was the thing that was drawing the audience. And it just uh, possessed everybody. I mean, uh, Bob Cobra told me that he went to Bermuda on vacation once and it was six o'clock, he couldn't get a cab. And he didn't know why. And the cab driver said, well, everybody's watching Dark Shadows. I think one of the things that made it work was that we took it all very seriously. We did not feel that it was campy. To us, it was very real. And everything that happened, the actors took seriously, and so did we, the whole production staff. Of course, a lot of the funny moments involved Jonathan's teeth. I mean, uh, luckily we were on tape although we, we tried to run like a live show, but there were moments when he just couldn't get those teeth into his mouth. And there was always, you had to have a cutaway so that Jonathan could do that. And, you know, and we'd just be struggling with it sometimes. So I suppose those were some of the odd moments. Uh, I do think that no one has really found out why the show was so popular when it became a vampire show. I thought about it and um, I think one of the reasons is that the vampire story itself is such a complex one. It is involved with all kinds of sexual feelings. I remember Jonathan told me he used to get pictures from women naked from the waist up saying, bite me Barnabas, bite me. I think that one of the, of the appeals, w w an unconscious appeal was that and the other I think was the character of Barnabas. Jonathan himself is an innately sweet person. And that came through. I remember telling him, and we talked about how it should be played as the reluctant vampire. Stop me before I bite her again. And I think that was a, another element, that the, the vampire was treated like a human being with a problem, and everybody liked him. Joan Bennett has left me with nothing but wonderful memories. I just wish that she could be with us now to tell us her impressions of the show, but my impressions of her are only good. Uh, I remember the first day of rehearsal, I was kind of excited about working with a star like Joan Bennett because in her time she had been a really big star. But she was so down to earth. She was so unstarlike in her behavior toward us. She was so real that uh, it, we quickly lost any feeling we had about being self-conscious. She was a very generous person. She would offer to run lines with any member of the cast. Now that is very rare. Most actors are so concerned about their own parts that they have got time to worry about other people. But she did. I would come in in the morning and there'd be nothing but fluorescent lights on. Rehearsal lights are merciless. She would look beautiful. She had no makeup on. All the actors and actresses came in with no makeup on because they knew they'd be made up. She just looked beautiful. She looked beautiful in just her natural skin and her natural eyes. And also, she was generous with herself as a, a working person. I came in, say, and the production assistant had to set up chairs for rehearsal. She'd start helping us. She would start, I said, Joan, you'd make a wonderful production assistant. She was just great. She was nothing but generous. The critical thing was uh, the technical ability to do the stuff and at the same time uh, make it look uh, spontaneous, real, and effortless. And it was very hard to do then because, for example, if we had something 
done on chroma key which was endless but difficult but we did enormously difficult things like as I say having a, a hand just a hand uh, follow an actor or a, a jury trial where people walked in and they had no heads I mean and we did this all and we had to figure out how to do it well then we had no way of one camera had no way of knowing what the other one was doing it used to paint or rather draw with a with a crayon, uh, we would draw the picture that one camera had on another. It was very difficult to maintain size ratio of the hand to the actor that was following it. Today, we can punch one camera's picture in another, and it's a cinch. It's no problem at all. And we use keying instead of chroma keying, uh, which we could use any color. Now, one of the things we could do on that show were things we, that we, like the technical people will help us with. Uh, the, the, the writers decided they want flames shooting out of the eyes of the witch. Wonderful. Our job was to do it. The technical director, Jake Lepatkin, said, let's put black light in her eyes. In other words, don't light up her eyes. Make them black. And then we, on another camera, we had uh, flames, and we would put the flames, key the flames in through her eyes. And it was wonderful, but the technical crew was very helpful too. So everybody threw ideas into the pot, and those meetings were, were very crucial. Very, very crucial. And uh, they were like two, three hours long. The series was so popular with the young audience that my husband, who was examining eyes in his office uh, in, in uh, Kew Gardens Hills, told me that the kids would get off the bus stop closest uh, to the nearest kid's house so they could get home in time to watch Dark Shadows. They would all rush pell-mell into there to watch it. And uh, he was just amazed when he saw it a few times. He couldn't understand. I said, you have to watch it all the time to be engrossed in it. And then once you watch it, you're hooked. There's no way to leave it.